Hey, what's up guys? It's Lucas and you're watching Fine Tuning. I hope you're all having a good week. I have been incredibly busy with guitar tech work lately, which is like my main source of income. So when I, I get piled up and as a lot of it, like I kind of have to focus on doing that. So sometimes my YouTube channel can suffer a little bit, so sorry. Anyway, uh, I've been doing a bunch of tech work lately and I noticed that there are a few tools in particular that stood out to me is like, man, I just could not live without these tools. <laughs> like, um, and as it so happens, they are all Stumac tools. Um, now, this video is not sponsored in any way by Stu Stumac. They've never paid me or given me anything. This is just stuff I have bought with my own personal funds. And I'm going to give you my uh, favorite Stumac tools. There's five of them. Oh, also, just to try something new, I'm actually shooting in 60 frames per second today rather than my usual 24 frames per second. So let me know if you like that or not, if you think the movement in 60 frames is more satisfying. Let me know. All right, number one is the Guitar Tech screwdriver set. Um, now, there are other companies that make Guitar Tech screwdriver sets that are probably just as good. I don't know. I just really like this one a lot, and it has served me beautifully and paid for itself many times over. So basically, it's just a little screwdriver, and then there's a bunch of different heads, and they're all really specific, like, heads that you use when you're doing guitar setup work. And I do a lot of setup work. That's probably the thing I do the most of is setup and fret work. So, uh, yeah, this, this thing is just invaluable to me. It's got, you know, hex key heads, it's got flat and Phillips head screws. Um, there's a little brush in there, these, these little heads that, like, you can use to kind of start a screw hole. Just, you know, all kinds of extremely handy stuff. Um, and I use this pretty much without fail on every job that I do. Um, for something, I'm going to use this, whether it's to take off a back plate because I'm doing electronics, take off the truss rod cover because I'm going to have to adjust the truss rod, adjust pickups, take, I mean, you just like, you name it, I will use this for whatever job I'm going to have to. So this one just stays like within arm's reach all the time. And it's so good that I'm going to buy another one just to put in my bag when I go play somewhere so that I find you to make an adjustment or something. Um, so I love this. Okay, next we have uh, two things kind of put together. So that's going to be the uh, gauged nut files like this. Um, I get it to focus there. It doesn't want to focus. Um, anyway, this is a 50 gauge nut file, but I have a whole like smattering of these files in different gauges and sizes because one of the things that I do um, like that's a kind of a part of the setup to me is cutting the nut uh, on the guitar or the bass cutting it to the right height and also the right width and that's very important for a number of reasons intonation tuning stability playability all kinds of stuff and I have tried like every nut file you can think of I have tried it um, and I, I have some of the ones that are like this where they have the handle and they're kind of tapered down like and they have you know they'll have one thickness on one side and one side of the other and like these seem like a good idea um but to me they don't they they tend especially on the unwound strings they tend to cause this problem where they want to like wiggle just a little and and when it does that it'll make almost like a w shape in the nut and so you'll go to bend a string and it'll go ping 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 it's really annoying um, so these have their place, I think, but I most of the time have gone to where I just use the regular kind of, I would, I would describe it as like a U-shape file and then it's just flat so it doesn't get thick in the center. Um, now because of that, like when you have one of these thick ones, it's like a 50 gauge, it's pretty sturdy, it doesn't really bend. Um, but when you're using one of the really small ones, like say a 13 gauge, like this, then the file is kind of bendy right and you don't want it to bend because you, I mean you want a, a straight smooth path as you can make and so the other part of this is these uh, nut file backers um, which are I find really really handy um, they're basically just you put the file inside of it like this and then you tighten down these little set screws and it makes it so that you can use this whole thing and it keeps the file stiff very very handy the nut files are like it's like $17 a piece or something. Again, it seems expensive, but I promise you, if you do this kind of work a lot, it pays for itself in no time. And to be able to know that you're gonna do the job right the first time and not have to get like your abrasive cord out or like have to fill a nut slot and redo it or something, it's like a huge time saver and it's a huge load off my mind. So um, I have a lot of the different files, not all of them, but a lot of them. And I have both sizes of the nut backers for the uh, like the small ones and nut backers, the <laughs> file backers for the uh, the small and the big. And those are uh, $11.95 a piece, which I think is 
pretty reasonable for what they do. But yeah, um, I would say, you know, start with whatever size files you need for the specific project. And then as you need another size file, just get that one. And you know, it'll add up over time slowly like that. And before you know it, you'll have like every size file you could need for anything. So this is a pretty new tool for me, um, but I have used it so much that I felt it was worth putting on this because I spent just, I mean, I've only had it for, I don't know, six or eight months or something like that, but I've used it so much in that time span that I, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is this needs to go on the list. So that would be the fret kisser. So what it is is like a, a, a fret rocker, basically, um, but in the middle of the throw of every side is a little diamond plated file or diamond embedded file. I don't know. It's, it's a file. Um, so what you can do is you can use your regular fret rocker to find a high spot, like a high fret, and then you can take this and put it there and you can use this on just that spot and it will basically tell you with the other parts of this when you get it level. And so this is really great if you have to do like just a tiny little bit of spot leveling. So rather than have to file, you know, several frets in a row just to make sure or to have to do a whole level and dress like that. So what I'll do now is I'll go through with a fret rocker and I'll just find all the high spots. And if there's only like four or five high spots or something like that, and it's all kind of concentrated in a different area or something like that, then I will go back and use this. And then I can just worry about crowning and polishing those instead of having to do the whole thing. So that saves me time, that saves the customer money. It's just a win-win for everyone. Again, might seem like an expensive tool, it's $125 or something like that, but it just is such a good design and it's like invaluable to me. Like I use this all the time. And related to fret stuff, the other one that I found that, again, this is a, this is a really new one for me. I've only had it for like maybe two weeks or something, um, but I just have, it's like changed the way that I do the work. Um, so this is the Z file. So I do a lot of fret work. I do a lot of level dressing and crowning stuff. So if you've done that work, you know that it's very tedious, very time consuming and very precise. And it's like hard on your eyes and your fingers. And just, I mean, like there's a reason those jobs cost more because it's just really labor intensive. And if you have really good tools, it makes the job much easier to do and you can turn them out quicker, you make more money, and also it's just a better result for the end user. So the Z file is a crowning file. So like once you have leveled your frets, then the frets are gonna be kind of flat on the top and you need to round them over again, crown them. And usually what I would use for that would be like a concave type file. Um, like I have a Baroque one that's pretty cool. Um, I have some other ones. Uh, or you could use a three-sided file, like you know, a triangle-shaped file, something like that. But what you want to do is basically take off the sides of the flat until there's just a very thin strip uh, across the top that hasn't been touched, so that you've really kind of created this rounded top shape. Now, when you're trying to do that with a concave file, you can't really see what you're doing, so you have to just go like a tiny little bit at a time um, and make sure you don't take off too much, because if you take off too much, then you have to re-level. Um, if you're using a three corner file or something like that, then that works pretty good, but I think it's kind of hard to control. Um, especially if like, you know, you're just having an off day, like you haven't had your coffee and you're like a little shaky or something. You know? So I don't really like using three corner files for that. Um, I'm just not, I'm not good enough, I don't think. Uh, but the Z file has been really cool because um, you can look at it on the web page, but it kind of is like a shallower file on one side and a deeper file on the other. Um, which I guess is because, you know, it kind of creates a Z shape when you look at it this way. So what it does is it cuts on both sides of the fret, but it's like a high pointed triangle inside. And so it doesn't touch the top of the fret. It can't touch the top of the fret. And all it will do is it'll go kind of at a more steep angle on one side and a shallower angle on the other. And you'll be able to clearly see as you're removing material. And then you can flip it over and it does the other opposite side. And when you get done, it just leaves the most beautiful, straight, thin line of like real estate on top of the fret. And it just does such a good job. <laughs> I've done like four or five fret jobs with this recently, and it just made it go so much faster. I can't even begin to describe how much faster that fret job, like it probably shaved an hour off of it um, because it is just so easy to use, like, and it just works, you know? So 
Um, this one, again, you might think it seems expensive. It's like $108 or something, but there's a few different ones, but this is the original one that I have that it's my favorite. I like, I really like the way it works. So if you do fret work, if you do lots of fret work, try the file. And then last but not least, this is just one that I use all the time. Again, this is another example, one of those that you probably could get from somewhere other than Stumac if you wanted to, but I just know that I like the Stumac one a lot. And that is uh, the notched straight edge. Again, a lot of what I do is set up and fret work. And so the uh, neck relief is very important for me to know. Um, so the notch straight edge basically is just cut out for frets um, on a long guitar scale, which is like a 25 and a half, or on a short guitar, which would be like a 24 and three quarters. Um, and so you can put this down on the fretboard with your guitar on the bench and you can kind of see the light in between and you can see how much bow is in the neck or if there is any bow or if it's back bowed. Um, I use this every time I do a setup to get just a really good idea of where it is so I can take some measurements and kind of figure out what the person likes because the, one of the things I do is I take notes. Um, so if I do multiple jobs for a person, I keep notes of like what kind of setup they like so that I can kind of continually reproduce that. That's the idea. Um, but also every time I do a fret job, you need to get the neck like as close to perfectly straight as possible. And so this allows you to really finely see that. Um, you can even use like feeler gauges to, you know, see if you can get underneath it kind of thing. The reason I like this one is because some not straight edges are like thin material, like, uh, like a yardstick, like a metal yardstick or something like that. And not that that won't work. It probably would. Um, but I know because this is like really thick, heavy duty, will not bend material and it's like fine ground on the edges. Like I know that this is accurate and it's not going to bend and you can, I mean, it's just, this is really handy. And also it's like level flush this way so that sometimes if I just need a small patch of something level, like, uh, to file a piece of a saddle or something, I use this because what I can do is set this down and I can put a little piece of like adhesive sandpaper on the side of it and because it is completely flat level I can take that like bridge saddle of an acoustic guitar and I can put it on here and just file it like this um, so it's just really heavy duty and feels good and stays put you know so once you put it on the neck like if you got it good and balanced like it'll just stay there so you can really look at it and not have to worry about it wobbling over it's got some actual thickness to it there are my favorite uh, tools that I'm using right now that are all from Stumac again as I said this video is not sponsored in any way by Stumac. They haven't ever given me anything or anything like that. I would love them to, so hey Stumac, if you want to, hit me up. I love your stuff. Um, but uh, this is just all my personal experience. Like I said, some of it seems kind of expensive, but uh, in my experience, it just pays for itself if you do a lot of this work like I do. It's just, it becomes invaluable, um, especially the Z file. If you do fret work, get the Z file, man, I'm telling you. I can't speak highly enough of it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you, uh, all your compliments on the music stuff that I put out recently. And stay tuned. We're going to do some more things. I'm going to have some really cool stuff coming up that I'm excited about. And uh, until next time, I'll catch you later.